There are some new images and details for Oppenheimer thanks to a newly published article by Total Film Magazine here in the UK. We primarily get an interview with Christopher Nolan talking about how he filmed the nuclear trinity test, the development of a new black and white IMAX film camera, and his thoughts on the performances of Killian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the images and details shared, breaking down the newest info from the film. Before I get into it though, if you want to keep up to date on any of my content surrounding Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's discuss the new images and details for Oppenheimer from Total Film. So for me, Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer is right at the top of my most anticipated films of 2023, and with Total Film giving us a new article with details and images from the film, you could say that I was more than excited to check it out. The film stars Killian Murphy as J. Robert Oppenheimer, the theoretical physicist who helped design the first nuclear weapons during World War II, later resulting in the two nuclear explosions in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Leading the Manhattan Project's Los Alamos Laboratory, he would go on to feel guilt surrounding the power he helped forge, and the years that followed involved trials and investigations into his political associations. This is the first time Killian Murphy has led a Christopher Nolan film, having starred in previous projects during the rise of the auteur blockbuster filmmaker's early career. And alongside an ensemble cast and Nolan's adaptation of Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin's book, American Prometheus, there's even more to be excited about. The new Total Film article, which is included in this month's magazine, features two covers, one standard and one subscriber version, alongside multiple images and details from an interview with Nolan himself. The images include Killian Murphy at a court hearing, an intense moment between Killian's character and his wife Catherine, played by Emily Blunt, a new shot of Robert Downey Jr. in black and white film, Killian climbing a structure at what could be the Trinity test site, Oppenheimer amongst an audience, and a behind the scenes shot of Nolan, cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytemer, and the main actor setting up a take in the desert. I will show these images on screen again as I get into the details, so speaking of that, let's dive into that mentioned Christopher Nolan interview. So in the magazine article, Nolan talked to Total Film about how he created the first nuclear weapon detonation using no CGI or digital effects, and the struggle of pulling this off. The filmmaker is of course known for favouring practical effects, so it's understandable that he would go the full mile in capturing a nuclear explosion to its biggest of possibilities. In the article, the filmmaker said, I think recreating the Trinity test, the first nuclear weapon detonation in New Mexico, without the use of computer graphics, was a huge challenge to take on. Andrew Jackson, my visual effects supervisor, I got him on board early on, was looking at how we could do a lot of the visual elements of the film practically, from representing quantum dynamics and quantum physics to the Trinity test itself, to recreating with my team Los Alamos up on a mesa in New Mexico in extraordinary weather, a lot of which was needed for the film in terms of the very harsh conditions out there. There were huge practical challenges. He went on saying that Oppenheimer is a story of immense scope and scale, it's one of the most challenging projects I've ever taken on in terms of the scale of it, and in terms of encountering the breadth of Oppenheimer's story. There were big logistical challenges, big practical challenges, but I had an extraordinary crew and they really stepped up. It will be a while before we're finished, but certainly as I watch the results come in, and as I'm putting the film together, I'm thrilled with what my team has been able to achieve. And as he hints at in the article, the traditional Nolan formatics, the uses of time, and the subjective experience of reality will all be present in new ways. 
Nolan said, We're trying to tell the story of somebody's life and their journey through personal history and larger scale history. And so the subjectivity of the story is everything to me. We want to view these events through Oppenheimer's eyes. And that was the challenge for Killian that I set him to take us on this journey. That was the challenge for Hoyt Van Hoytema, my designer, my whole team. How do we view this extraordinary story through the eyes of the person who was at the heart of it? All of our decisions on how to make this film were based on that real premise. It's not just from a thematic or storytelling perspective that Nolan is building his film upon though, because he also gave us some details surrounding the new technology that this project is going to be pushing forward to. Like the teaser trailer suggested, there will be IMAX black and white footage in the film, but Total Film confirms that there will also be sequences in colour featured throughout. Nolan recalled, I very much loved the structural assistance and the aesthetic charge of shifting between colour and black and white that I had on Memento. I'd always been looking for a reason to go back to that. And in the case of Oppenheimer and the way in which we tell this story, it's very subjectively told, but also with a more objective story strand that interweaves within that. It was really the perfect time to go back to that device that I loved so much. So we challenged the people at Kodak and Photochem to make this work for us, and they stepped up. For the first time ever, we were able to shoot IMAX film in black and white, and the results were thrilling and extraordinary. As soon as Hoyt Van Hoytemer and I saw the first tests come in, we just knew that this was a format that we were immediately in love with. Finally, Nolan did mention a bit about his cast, and specifically, he talked about the performances of Killian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. On Killian, he said, I've always known since I first met him, however many years ago it is now, almost 20 years, that he is one of the great actors, not just of his generation, but of all time. And I've been waiting for the project, and I know he has too, where we can collaborate with him as the lead, and I could put the most enormous weight, cinematic weight, on his shoulders, and watch him carry that burden. It was such a thrill to be able to call Killian and say, this is it. Then there's the addition of Robert Downey Jr., who plays Louis Strauss, chairman of the US Atomic Energy Commission, who would later go against Oppenheimer. Nolan said, We all know that Robert Downey Jr. is one of the great movie stars. It's so easy to forget that he's also one of the greatest actors of all time. Watching him lose himself in that performance and completely lose himself in a character in this way was just an incredible reminder of just what an amazing actor he is. So based on Nolan's comments, it'll be interesting to see to what extent all the actors have transformed into their individual roles, and to what amount Oppenheimer's perspective is used when it comes to how the audience sees this story unfold. Based on these images, it definitely looks more character focused than the last two Nolan pictures, and that's something I've always loved about the filmmaker. Each project, he keeps his signature style on display, but at the same time, it's vastly different from the previous one in structure, storytelling, and character portrayals. And with what Nolan says about the brand new IMAX camera that was developed, and the filming of that nuclear explosion scene using practical effects, it makes me wonder just how he will pull it all off this time. We'll soon find out, but I expect that Nolan will have outdone himself again from a filmmaking and storytelling perspective. But they were the main images and details released from the new Total Film edition of Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Just to tag on at the end of this video, because people keep asking me, I currently have no idea whether we will be getting an Oppenheimer trailer in front of Avatar The Way of Water, as the only thing that's been confirmed to play in front of that film is a 4 minute new look at Mission Impossible 7. Many of us predicted before that Avatar 2 would be the perfect spot for the new Oppenheimer trailer, because it follows the traditional Nolan trailer release strategy from his previous films. But with this new article being dropped this week, and that Mission Impossible footage attached to Avatar 2, we may be looking at a rare case where that strategy isn't repeated this time around. Ultimately, we'll have to see, and I will keep you updated on my community page if I have any news surrounding a trailer drop, but as of right now, I haven't heard anything official surrounding it. 
But when it comes to the new article from Total Film, I'm interested to hear what you guys think towards the new images and details, alongside what personally excites you about Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. So let me know down below in the comment section. For much more videos and news on Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex and as always, make some noise.